Hello. Today we are going to be making a bath mat. Can you see that? We're going to be using a quilting style known as a log cabin. It's a fairly simple one and we're going to be making two quilt blocks to sew together for this project. And we're going to back it with one of our old towels. Join us, won't you? Hello and welcome to another Mumsy video. Today we are going to make a log cabin quilted bath mat. I have one in my bathroom that is from Ikea and I loved it and it was so soft at the beginning but I've washed it several times and it's getting a little bit grubby so we're going to replace it with a homemade one. So let's go through the supplies you're going to need to make this. Some thread, a sewing machine, scissors, measuring tape, all that sort of thing. For the back of the bath towel I just use a plain old 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 being the keyword towel. Um, I'm going to cut this one down to size because I don't need a bath mat this big, but that will serve as the bottom of our bath mat. And then for the quilting on the top, I have saved, as I was cutting out those um, strips for my rug, I was saving Sort of long strips because log cabin is a bunch of long strips made into a square pattern so i've got you know all sorts of colors you could do a theme you could pick one color and do log cabin or you could you know mix and match and make it really crazy like i'm going to do <laughs> i've got all sorts of these strips in here anyway i've got a bag full of them um Cotton works the best. You don't want anything nylon. There's somebody walking outside my window. <laughs> anyway, uh, you don't want anything nylon or, um, you know, something that isn't absorbent because then what's the point of having a bath mat, right? So most of my strips here are going to be cotton. That'll be the easiest. And um, if you want to add a little bit more softer padding, you can put a little bit of quilt batting down. I find that the towel is uh, soft enough, so I don't need it. Also, you can use these strips to make the edging around the bath mat, like the uh, binding. Or you could just uh, get a package of bias tape long enough that there's enough to go all the way around the size you want to make. And uh, I think that's it. So we're going to get started next. Okay, the first thing you'll want to do is measure the area in your bathroom where you want the mat to fit. And we are going to cut this towel down to the size that we want. So I've measured and I want to cut off one end of this towel because I want a pretty big mat. Anyway, I need it about that much off. So I'm just going to give it a trim. You can make some face cloths out of the other half or something if you need. <laughs> Make sure your towel isn't, I mean I wanted an old towel but I don't want those ones that are falling apart too much. <laughs> you can see that it's a little frayed on the ends and stuff but we'll clean that up uh, when we make the thing. So I, yeah that's about right. And now you could do this one of two, three ways. Um, I'm going to quilt the log cabin uh, and I'm going to probably make two large squares and then fit it to my towel that way. But you could also do it kind of a rectangular way and uh, do one like rectangular uh, piece. Anyway, I'll show you how Log Cabin goes 
and then you can decide from there. So we're going to get our strips next and cut a few. Okay, I've got my strips here and I've got some of the smaller pieces. I want to start with a smaller piece just because it's easier and I am going to do two big chunks of log cabin. So you can measure this out, decide what you want, but basically you're starting your square. I'm going to make mine all wonky, different sizes, different strips. Uh, you can have it all one uniform strip. It You just build onto it until you got the size you want anyway. So it doesn't really particularly matter how you do this. But basically, we want to start with a nice square there. And the first thing we do is take our next strip and sew it along the top of our square. So you could put a funny picture in that square. That would be cute. Anyway, we're going to just sew along this and then we'll trim it to what we want. I'll come back and show you that after. Okay, so I'm back and I have sewn, that's our starting square there. I've sewn this strip onto the top like so and then just cut it. Um, and I've done that twice because I'm going to be making two of them. Now the next thing to do is we're working in a clockwise pattern around is to sew the strip right sides together down both of these onto the side there and then trim it as well. And then we'll do the bottom and the top and we'll just keep going around like that and building our square until it's big enough to fit, tall enough to fit onto our towel. And I'm doing two of them so that I can put them side by side to make a nice pattern. And we can always trim off whatever excess we have after. I've saved an example here of how it will look before we trim it. So I've done this side one now here and I'm going to trim it in line with that square. So, so far we've got that and I've done it twice. I used a different strip so I could show you how to trim it and really that piece won't do and we'll see. Will that one fit across? It will. So we'll add that strip there because there's a little bit left because the next thing we do is now we've got the top and the side. We're going to do the bottom and work our way around in a clockwise fashion until it builds and builds to the size we want. You can see here now that we've got full one full round, we've got the center. Here's the first one we sewed on on the top, then down the side, then down the bottom, and now along this side. So the next strip we will sew will be, of course, along this top because we're going in a clockwise manner. And we just keep building and building and I'll show you the progress as I go and uh, we're going to make quite fairly large blocks um, so that when we put two together it will fit in the uh, bath mat and that'll be the top of our bath mat. One thing I should point out while we're creating this uh, piece uh, it's going to get big and um, sometimes the strips you have are not long enough and so what I do is I just um, cut two strips, sew them together and then make the uh, next row here on the uh, thing. So you'll see like if I'm going to go across the top here and I don't have one that's this long, I can always just sew one together. It doesn't matter if there's a seam showing in the middle. Just to keep it consistent, I like to use the same fabrics. I don't like um, 
sewing two different ones together because it's already pretty uh, busy of a pattern. I don't need it anymore by uh, cobbling together a couple different ones for one row. So that's what I'm going to do and we're going to continue along. I will show you how it's all done and uh, also you can press as you go. I tend um, to just keep going as much as possible and then I uh, press it all at the end. I have my towel laid out here just to check on size. You'll notice that the wider strips will make the piece bigger. It can also make it more rectangular or square depending on how wide and how um, how you organize the strips but we're just gonna kind of do a haphazard pattern some of them are wider some of them are thinner and see where we go from there we can always once we get the second one in there we'll just trim them up to match and fit on our towel to my floor because it's getting a little bit too big to fit on top of that freezer but I've sewn the pieces together and I was looking to see if I even had a little bit of quilt batting and I found this excellent piece here of bamboo and I know there's all sorts of wonderful properties of this bamboo that will make it great for a bath mat. Um, it has natural germ fighting abilities. So like mildew and things that happen in the bathroom will not happen as much, hopefully. And it's also very washable, very absorbent, very soft for your feet and it is just a lovely piece so I've cut enough to fit our towel and uh, our two squares here and I'm going to sandwich it like this where the towel is underneath then the batting then the squares if you don't have any batting it's not a big deal the towel is um, absorbent and soft enough to make this a great mat and what we're going to do is we're going to pin it and we're going to kind of quilt so sew along I'm going to stitch in the ditch along a few of these lines here just to keep these shift from shifting around as we're uh, as we're using it so you just sew through all three layers just like you would a quilt it's a nice small project, so if you don't have a quilting sewing machine, because I certainly don't, uh, it's not too hard to just kind of pin it down a little bit. And then we will kind of trim it off even more and bind it next. Okay, we're back here again. We have made the squares, we've sewn them together. We have sandwiched the towel with the quilt batting, which is optional, and the squares. And we have sort of done a little bit of quilting just to keep it in place. I sewed along this center. I sewed along the L here. And I sewed along a line back here. Don't need too much. You could go really crazy and do all the way around every... Uh, every seam but it's not necessary we just wanted to make sure that it stays in place then I laid it all out flat and I squared it off all nice trimmed it all so it's ready for binding now do you remember when we did the toy hammocks I showed you how to make your own binding like this where you take a strip and you 
press it on either side and then into the center like that. That is what we're going to use to uh, do the binding on here. So I'm going to start somewhere in the center top and I'm going to start binding it and I will come back and show you how I do the corners. I'm not going to do a perfect little mitered corner, but I'll do one that will work pretty well for what we're doing. If, if you know how to do a mitered corner, then that's perfectly, that's more than acceptable. <laughs> I'm just going to do it the kind of easy beginner's way so that uh, everyone will be able to follow along a little bit better. If you remember from the toy hammock video, I always zigzag my binding because it just it makes it easier to catch everything on both sides and make sure that everything is tightly locked. It's just a little bit of a beginner's trick that's a little easier than trying to sew it straight. Also with the binding you could use bias tape. Um, I find it's nicer to make my own because then I can make it thicker, I can make it to match, uh, all sorts of things that make it a little easier. So now I've got to this corner. Can you see I'm about uh, two inches from the corner. What to do, what to do, right? So I'm still in my sewing, like it's still under the needle in my sewing machine. So I'm like coming up on it and I stop there and what I do, if you can see, I just fold it, oops, it's hard to do when you're not at your machine, kind of like this and then keep going just like that and then just pivot and keep sewing. It's a, a little bit of a tuck, it's not quite a mitered corner but it's just kind of a fold this half down, fold the other half on the other side down like this, and voila, you can keep going. Okay guys, we've got this all nice and bound. We've done the little corners there. This one wasn't as successful, but you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just going in your bathroom. This one was actually pretty good. <laughs> and you know what? I, you know how you play yarn chicken with crochet where you try to finish that row before the yarn runs out? Well, I was playing a version of that with my binding. I have, I just went over. I had an inch left right at the end there. I can't believe it. Anyway, I'm going to take you up to the bathroom, yay, and show you where this goes now. Welcome to my lovely washroom. And there it is, all done in front of a shower. Doesn't it look pretty? <laughs> so, let's put this on me now. Hi, it's me. <laughs> so, how was that for a sort of easy quilting project? It's needed. Anyway, uh, if you liked it, then like, uh, subscribe, comment with, um, what's your favorite housewares DIY? I like making uh, bath mats, but I really like making oven mitts. I like making curtains and hmm, I'm going to be making place mats soon because I need to replace mine. That's all a little more exciting than a bath mat, but <laughs> anyway, uh, click the little bell and bye bye for now.